Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Today, inshallah, we have four names uh, that, will be, well, that we will be covering, uh, inshallah, the names of Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, Al-Muttakabbir, and Al-Kabir, uh, names that connotate strength, repair, uh, mending brokenness, as well as greatness and awe. Um, so to begin with Al-Aziz, uh, the root meanings of this name have uh, the meanings of invincible, incapable of being overpowered, uh, being dignified, uh, being strong, uh, and the one who's needed, especially in the time of need. Uh, there's different meanings that are conveyed throughout the Quran, um, and even the Quran itself is referred to in the Revelation as, as, as Aziz, um, as unassailable in a sense. And so uh, apart from Aziz, from the same root words uh, or the root letters, we have the term of Izzah, that is derived or of honor or dignity that comes about. So when we lift it up, Al-Aziz as the dignified, this is where that meaning comes around uh, in tandem with the meaning of strength. And so uh, altogether, these indicate the aspects that Allah is not just one, but Allah is one that is uh, who is exalted in might, who can overcome uh, that which many uh, that which nothing else can overcome uh, is is not able to be overcome, and then who is unassailable, who is invincible, and ultimately who is dignified and distinguished and honored. We have known, as we've discussed in the past, with the other names of Allah, when they are an attribute of its Al Adil, if it's Ar Rahman. Ar-Rahim, any of these uh, names that Allah is the most of these, Allah is the source of these. And when we say Al-Aziz, uh, Allah is uh, not just the most exalted, Allah is essentially the that standard of it. Allah is uh, on a level uh, beyond any levels. And, and so uh, there's this uh, element to it that uh, is just distinguished beyond distinction in a sense. And so uh, in the Quran, um, we, we have this aspect of uh, Allah as uh, Al-Aziz in so many different uh, ways, shapes, and forms, but uh, particularly when we think of uh, the one um, who is helping, uh, the one who is there, uh, the one who comes to the aid of those who are in need. Uh, we have the uh, the case in, in the Battle of Badr where uh, Allah's help is, is what comes and, and Allah reveals the help to come through angels, but also this is uh, Allah's help that is coming to the believers when they are overwhelmed, when they are outnumbered, that regardless of the scenario, if we put our trust in Allah faithfully, with the appropriate precautions that we take that effort, we tie our camels, we will be given strength in one way, shape, or form. It may not be uh, in, in, in the form that we're expecting it, but there is that strength, there is that divine presence that comes when we do fulfill our end of the bargain. And uh, Allah is mighty and wise, and this is oftentimes uh, the case in the Quran, as Allah states that Allah is al-Aziz al-Hakim, uh, Allah is mighty and wise. And uh, the commands of Allah, what this, what this makes us think about is that then the commands, the actions of Allah, the decrees of Allah, um, you know, the operations of Allah are uh, not just being done in vain. They have wisdom in them. So Allah is mighty, but Allah is wise. And, and these two go hand in hand um, because oftentimes we see when uh, individuals, when, when we think about this element of power and might, when people come into control of might, it's very uh, not, not very common when you have someone come into power and they also have just as much uh, wisdom that comes with it. So you have distinguished examples of Suleiman um, alayhi salam, of the, the wise, uh, in a sense that, that he was, he was uh, you know, wise, but he also had all this power. And it was very much a distinction from most rulers who come into power who are not necessarily the most wise or may who abuse their powers in different ways. So Allah is Al-Aziz. Um, and as such, apart from, uh, you know, just being the most powerful uh, or the most mighty, Allah also stands up for the weak and against wrongdoing. Allah is the one who stands up for the orphans. So as Al-Aziz, uh, Allah is, as I mentioned, not just the mighty, um, free from anything else. Allah is uh, the mighty, 
the wise and all these things and Allah in his might stands up for those who are most in need uh, and who uh, are deserving of uh, help and if they're being wronged or anything like that. Uh, and so knowing that this might is very different than when we conceive of it, that when someone's mighty, um, this is uh, Allah exemplifying and using this might as, as it should be for us, an example of how we should use it when we have uh, power uh, or we come into power. What's also important is that it's not just this aspect of uh, lifting up those uh, who might be in dire situations or oppression or in wrongdoing. As Al Aziz, Allah is also the one who gives Izzah to the servants that are righteous, to the ones who are faithful to Allah, that Allah provides them uh, with this dignity. Uh, again, um, they may not receive that dignity in this world. They may not uh, be treated well, as we know the prophets uh, in all um, their uh, wisdom and in all their uh, respect and holiness that they were not uh, respected by uh, their peoples when they first came. And so, and for many of them throughout their lives, but Allah gives them Izza, Allah gives them dignity and honor. Uh, and especially in the time that counts, we talked about this yesterday, that the time that counts uh, is uh, when we are all called to account and when we live the lives outside of these corporeal bodies that Allah has dignified those who, um, who strive for Allah, who hold firm to Allah's trust and hope. Uh, and so believing that Allah is not just Al-Aziz in the strength sense and, and reinforcing us when we need help or uh, need some extra muscle, but also dignifying us uh, in, in that regard as well. And so uh, this might, as I mentioned, doesn't necessitate, necessitate uh, you know, nor it should equate to oppression. Um, as we mentioned in previous sessions, Allah has made oppression forbidden for himself. So Allah is someone, or Allah is uh, the one who uh, does not act in any aspect of oppression. And that includes when strength is factored in, when might, when uh, power, all these things, the compelling aspects are factored in. Uh, oppression is never a part of the equation. So within us, this name should give us the feelings of awe. It should let us know that Allah alone is the source of strength, that the strength is accompanied and not isolated from attributes like mercy, wisdom, and compassion, and that we strive to find that strength in Allah, that we not just strive to find that strength with Allah, that, that strength that is within us, we find that in Allah, but also we use that strength, as with any other name, to strengthen others, to help those around us, to uh, be remembering that we must be humble, because Allah is Al-Aziz, Allah is the one who is mighty, the powerful, um, and who are we? You know, we, we, we don't want to be arrogant, you know, we don't want to, uh, you know, lift up uh, ourselves above that, um, recognizing that we are in Allah's dominion. And so being mindful of the strength that we've been given, of the might that we express here, that and how are we using that, especially to the ones whom Allah gives uh, his izzah to, Allah gives um, the strength to, who do we who do we uh, think that we are in this aspect? And are we mindful of that? That we recognize with great power comes great responsibility. And this name tells us that we need to be mindful of it because there is the one who is the source of this power, the most powerful, whom we will have to be accountable for in terms of how we used our power and our might. The next name is Al-Jabbar. Al-Jabbar is the compeller, the one who mends that which is broken. This name indicates both majesty as well as beauty. It has this root meaning of compelling, of strength, of mending that which is broken, and Allah's uh, uh, majesty in, in the sense. When we think about the compeller, uh, Allah's uh, majesty and strength over his servants is what is seen as that which is compelling. Um, only Allah can compel everything uh, according to his divine will, but nothing can compel Allah. Uh, and it's interesting that when Jab Al Jabbar is or Jabbar is used in the Quran uh, for humans, it's used to describe someone who's like a tyrant or tyrannical. Uh, yet Allah is Al Jabbar and is also the most merciful and just never oppressive because oppression is not a part of the equation. So when you remove oppression from the equation, you see that Al-Jabbar is the one that is the most merciful, most just, the most compelling, and the and, and the one who mends that which is broken, not causes further breakages. And so it's a name that's particularly for those who are in positions of power to take heed and be merciful and be mindful because of the fact that uh, we see what happens when uh, oppression enters the equation, that this can be something that the Quran and Allah refers 
referred to as uh, tyrannical, but when you remove it, it's something that is very holy and sacred, but uh, ultimately recognizing you are in the dominion of al-dubar. How are we going to react? Um, the Arabic word for a splint that's used to help uh, mend a broken bone to heal is called uh, jibira. Um, and it comes from the same root as Jabbar. Uh, the splint compels the bone to heal uh, in the right way. It compels the bone to restore itself to its original whole and unbroken state. And we recognize that uh, as humans, brokenness is a part of our humanity when we go through life, that we get broken by the circumstances in life, by different things. And so we find that Allah is the one who can mend our brokenness, that Allah has uh, does not have one thing that humans have, which is that broken. Brokenness. And so we take that brokenness to Allah to be mended. And how do we live this thing? We recognize that when we are broken, it doesn't mean we are any more distant from Allah. It means that we take that brokenness to Allah, that we turn to the one who is the mender or the repairer of that brokenness. We don't want to also break other people. We don't want to hurt other people. We want to be mindful that as we would like Allah to be to us, we would like others to be to us and we would like to be to them as well. So not harming anybody, not breaking anybody anybody, not affecting them in that way, but helping to heal those who are broken, helping to heal and mend those who need uh, repair, who need help, and to find uh, Allah in our brokenness, but also in the brokenness of the world, that we see so many different things that are broken. How can Allah fill in the gaps? Lastly, we have the names of Al-Kabir and Al-Muttakabir that connotate the uh, meaning of Allah is greater. So we often get weighed down by the stress of this world and the various issues that are in our lives, and it can be all consuming and preoccupying and worrying. But part of the reason that Allah gives us these names in specific is for reassurance, and especially the names of Al-Kabir and Al-Muttakabir that at the end of the day, regardless of what's on our plate, Allah is greater, and what is due to Allah is greater. It's what, what is pleasing to Allah is greater. And it's not just the things like salah or the ritual worship or the ibadat. When we talk about the worship that is due to Allah, that, that Allah is greater, everything that we are uh, in tune with around us matters. How do we treat the rights of our neighbors, the rights of our families, the rights of ourselves, the rights of Allah? Are these in balance? Because when we get preoccupied with certain things and they take over ourselves, um, we start to neglect these responsibilities. So we want to make sure that we're balanced. And so we refresh ourselves by saying Allah Hu Akbar, that we say that Allah is greater. And so Kabir is a name that denotes uh, large or great oftentimes when, with respect to size. But when uh, we look at it with respect to Allah, Allah is not confined by size or our mental conceptions of him or our frameworks of Allah. And so this is thus truly great, that it's beyond any conception. And so whatever we think, Allah is Akbar. Allah is Akbar or greater. Um, and we say this in Salah that uh, Allahu Akbar, we begin our Salah with that and recognizing that Allah is greater than whatever it is at this present moment. And so in our decision making at any juncture in life or uh, any time in the day, we want to remember that Allah is greater and our focus should be on pleasing Allah in any matter. So we shouldn't want to harm anybody. We shouldn't want to cheat anybody or wrong anybody um, and to uh, want to improve and uh, seek our own dignity and help to polish that. But to Doing, in doing so, it's necessary to remember that uh, pleasing Allah is greater because Allah is the bestower of dignity. Allah is the bestower of justice. Allah is the bestower of the right path. Uh, Al-Mutakabir, same root uh, as Al-Kabir. It's the one that has all grandeur that's truly great, elevated above the creation. And what these names remind us is that first and foremost, we need to be humble. We need to not be arrogant. We need to uh, be mindful that uh, Allah is greater than all that is around us and remind ourselves of this greatness that we need to prioritize and see that there are so many ways that we can connect to Allah and remember that Allah is greater um, and that the things of this world obviously do deserve our attention, but they shouldn't preoccupy us to that degree that we neglect the rights of uh, Allah, that we neglect the rights of our families, that we neglect the rights of our bodies. So inshallah, we uh, let these names settle in within us and we remember that above all, Allah is Al-Aziz. Allah is the most powerful, the, the one who gives dignity, the, uh, the one who is the strong and able to help us in any 
aspect that Allah is al-jabbar, the one who can mend us when we are broken. Allah is al-mutakabbir and al-kabir, greater than anything that we might be focused on at this moment. And uh, in this greatness can help us achieve our true purpose and help us ascend to the levels that we so seek and that reunion with Allah. So when we acknowledge these names, we inshallah embark in not just living a more God conscious life, but a more wholesome life. So inshallah, until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.